In this video, I am going to go over Pandas data reader package, which is an extension of Pandas. It's very helpful in terms of getting access to remote data, especially financial data. You can look at the documentation here. If you're interested, we're looking at Pandas data reader. You can look at the syntax. The first thing we need to do is to check if we have installed Pandas data reader on our platform. Typically, most of you should have it. Otherwise, we can run a code PIP install pandas data reader. So let me run this first. In my case, it says requirement already satisfied, which means I have this package already pre-installed. If not for you, it might take a minute and it will install the package. Now let's just start working with this. The first thing we do, like other things we did in pandas, we need to First, import the packages that we're going to use. Here, we're going to import pandas as PD. We're also going to import um, date time. We we'll set that as DT. We also need to import um, pandas data reader, and we set that as PDR. In addition to this, I would also like to from import from pandas uh, a couple of packages. We're going to import series and data frame that we've been working on in these series. In addition, we also want to uh, import from pandas data reader um, a couple of packages. We're going to import data and also we're going to import WB and uh, we need this in order to make sure our code runs. Once we have these packages now let's uh, start to work with our um, data. So here there are a couple of things you need to specify when we are working with uh, pandas data reader. Uh, most of the databases that we are going to retrieve data from need a ticker. Ticker is basically the, the symbol, the NASDAQ symbol for um, the company that we're looking for. We also need to specify a start and finish dates. So let me just bring some information here. Let's set the ticker to Apple and we're going to have a start date of first day of the year 2020. And we're going to set it till end of January that year. Now that we have set those dates, so again, note that we use DT date time. Now the syntax for bringing data is PDR.get. And here we can bring different types of data set. I can say get data Yahoo or get data Moex. I can say get data IEX. And there are various databases that are available. Let's look uh, online and, and some of these, um, like find out some of these data sets. I can search for get data in pandas data reader and here's the documentation so we see that for instance we have different modules as i mentioned for yahoo for iex there's also your stat data uh, here we're gonna use a data set called stocks or stoop um, here if we're looking at the documentation it receives different elements but essentially it gets the symbol it does get start and end and also have some additional values which we're not going to use for the sake of simplicity so here let's add another column row here we're going to say data is equal to pdr dot get um we look for our data sets and now we have to add um ticker and let's just start to just add ticker in addition to the start date if you press shift and tab you can also see the syntax so I'm adding ticker which was Apple you could have also mentioned Apple directly here and let's go just with the start date so I'm going to set my data and now let's look at this data set so let's say data dot head and I'm receiving an error I have to run this column first so once that package is imported, now I can run. So you see the data is pulled 
and once uh, and because we don't have an end date we get the most recent data on top so data head is the most recent data that's available in the data set I could also uh, limit this data by setting an end so we had the end date once I do that we see that now we get the data based on the period that we have specified if I say let's say head 25 now we get 25 values um, I believe that's the whole month disregarding the weekends and also the 1st of January where the market was closed we can also use other methods that we have learned previously we can let's change that into data.tail um, let's say the last five we see that that's basically the first few days of the year 2020 and um, we can play with this we can also um, specify let's say the columns in our data set we already see the columns but let's say if you were interested just to see the columns we can say data.columns and here we see that we have data for open uh, when the market open, high lows of that day, closing, and also the volume. Now let's try to get uh, another data set here. Instead of having just Apple, I want to bring that in just to show you how that works. Um, we can replace it. Um, and here, if I am running again a data, uh, and a snapshot of data, I can say data tail. I should be able to get the same data set so over there ticker was just the variable that I defined but essentially once you have if you have the symbols you can just use the company symbols up there you can also use additional symbols let's say if we wanted to compare Apple and Microsoft uh, stock performance on that day you have to put that within a list so let me put that and once I'm running that now we get more columns so we have every other value that we're looking for and a comparison of apple and microsoft so we can quickly eyeball these values if we're interested let's say the volume for instance the transactions on that day you can also have more number of companies again in the same way let's say if i have a ticker define a list of four competing let's say tech companies and I can run prices so I say prices is uh, we look at get data stocks and then we assign now ticker one plus the dates that we have set above so let's say start all the way and to the end so the first months of year 2020 now let me run this data set see if we get results so now we have a larger table and a comparison of all those values across these four symbols so again very easy to if you want to identify trends i can also run a data type and these data types are all floats there are ways to let's say if you are looking only at integer we can convert this data into an integer um, we will cover that at some point later on but again, here is a quick way to get a snapshot of the data that's available to us. Another interesting thing we can do is we can also only retrieve one of the columns. Let's say we were um, interested to locate, we can use the location. And here we can call, let's say, one of the dates, sorry, one of the rows. So we can say this was data for the first months of uh, 2020 so we can essentially just uh, retrieve this data set from one of the rows let's just pick one of these and here i can get data let's say from the 22nd of january and i have all of that data in one table again very easy to look at and compare the trends In the same way, we can also run um, our code, but only retrieve values from 
one of the columns let's say i am interested only at the volume of transactions so what i can do is let me just copy paste this code here i can say call it volume and my volume data is the data that i have specified but only i want i'm specifying the index column of volume so let me run this and i'm gonna run the volume.head let's see if we can get the data out here i got an error so i think i need to these these values are case sensitive so we have to change the volume to uh, capital so let me fix that and here once we run it we see that we capture the information that we have specified so these are all the volume information for these companies again another interesting uh, set of data um, to make some comparisons